It's trophy time in Evanston down the road from Chicago with the regular season title on the line. Some people call this the Super Bowl of Big Ten women's lacrosse. Maryland, number 12 in the country, 4-1 in the Big Ten. Northwestern, number 2 in the country, and a perfect 5-0 in the Big Ten. So what does that mean as we go into this game and the Big Ten tournament? Pretty simple. Northwestern, they win, and they are the outright regular season winners. Maryland, they win, they'll share it, and they'll get that number one seed. And good evening, everyone. Big time game tonight. That means we got a big time analyst, two time national champion from Northwestern, Taylor Thornton. I'm Dean Linky. These two teams have won 29 national championships. Massive game. It's huge. I mean, talk about one of the best rivalries. I'm a little biased, but in women's lacrosse. I mean, Northwestern's looking to win outright while Maryland's trying to get a piece of the pie and the number one seed. And how about the matchup to watch? Izzy Skane versus Abby Bosco. I mean, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Abby Bosco is just, she's little, she's fierce, but I mean, she has a presence down there for the Terps. While Izzy Skane, I mean, the Skane train keeps rolling from up top, from behind. Hopefully she comes out big tonight because Northwestern's going to need her. That's an incredible matchup between those two. But I will tell you, I think the winning goalie will win the Big Ten Goalkeeper of the Year. Molly LaLiberty, the transfer from Tufts. We've talked about her accolades, 14 and one. What a difference maker. Meanwhile, Emily Sterling on the other side for Maryland. I really do believe that the winning goalie will win the Big Ten Goalie of the Year. I'm with you on that, Dean. If they can get in the game early, get some nice stops, getting that momentum going for the defensive side, I mean, that's what leads to, you know, the wins, I say. You know, defense wins championships, and like when the goalie's in it, whole team's in it. All right, Taylor, they call it the Lake Show, and we've done a lot of Northwestern games this year. They've all been indoors. There was no doubt in Kelly Amati Hiller's mind that this game was going to be played outdoors because what you can't see, as you'll see the lake, it's a sellout. Exactly. It's a good day. Hey, late April, this is a good day for Chicago, <laughs> and it's packed. They sold out. It's awesome, all the fans that are there to see this big game. All right, here we go with, of course, both coaches, as always, pointing out draw control is so huge. And the first draw pulled out of the air by Madison Taylor. As you see the officials in this game underway. We'll say it often, just to remind you, Northwestern wins, perfect 6-0. Number one seed, the trophies, the hats, the t-shirts, they're all theirs. Maryland wins, and they split the title. They each get a trophy. But more importantly, Maryland gets that number one seed in the Big Ten Tournament. This game train starts early. Izzy Skane makes it 1-0 Northwestern. Talk about a start. That's how you want to come out. You want to get the hot hand early, and Skane absolutely did that. Northwestern had a beautiful draw control there right from the beginning, getting into the off, attacking in. And Skane seeing that hole right there, getting into her on that side. You see the Maryland defense kind of leaves her there. She gets a nice little lane inside, gets under doing what she does the best. Good little tuck protection. Offside hip, tough save to make. 73rd goal of the season, a year after missing the entire season with a torn ACL. Now 262 career goals, 70 assists, 332 points. And Scott Hiller telling me moments before the game, she is 100% coming back next year, going to the Kellogg Business School, and we'll play again for one more season. Best of both worlds. Get that NBA girl and hopefully have another great season. So that's awesome to hear. Back to the draw we go. Boy, that looked like a Taylor Cummings draw win right there, right? Just playing it right to yourself and winning it. Excellent draw control by Shay Ahern. She's been dominant at the draw circle all year. Super clean, right to herself, under control, looking to attack back for the Terps. The Big Ten women's lacrosse formed in 2015. Maryland in possession. They won the regular season. Maryland did in 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There was no season in 20, and then they wanted to get in 22. Maryland's won the tournament in 16, 17, 18, and 22. Northwestern winning the regular season in 21. The tournament in 19 and 21. We can't forget Penn State, the only outlier. They won the tournament in 2015. Yeah, Northwestern and Maryland have just been so dominant over the past few years. You know, 
Kathy Reese and Kelly Monte really just breeding excellence amongst both of their programs, and it's been a joy to watch. Mention that number 29 national titles, 22 for Maryland, seven for Northwestern. And it's worth saying again, Taylor Thornton winning two of those seven. Northwestern with a 1-0 lead. Trying to make it 2-0, early doors. Koikendall, good pass. Koikendall also expected back next year. Maryland, same situation as they'll have Libby May back, Emily Sterling, Hannah Lubecker, Shay Ahern, Baduzzi's coming back, Hench is coming back. That fifth year with the COVID, they get an extra year to do what they love. Great stop there by Sterling, massive. Great save because she was coming flying in right again, and that was an awesome just vision by Sterling. Nice little kick save there. Radigan, the active leader among all D1 players in goal scoring. She lit it up for Mercer. We talk a lot about Liberty, the transfer in goal, but Haley Radigan, what a pickup. As you see the Terrapins starting line up at the bottom of your screen. And there's La Liberty matching wits with Sterling. Another big save. Doing what she does best. That was a great save, really tough. Didn't have a lot of pressure on the, on the shooter and was able to kind of stop that point blank. Getting it back on the other end for the Cats. Western looking here, take some time, get into rhythm, start working their attack. Good pass in front, and the youngster Taylor, freshman phenom from the state of New York. Really nice angled cut, slipped in, and it's 2-0 Northwestern. Taylor has had a tremendous season so far. I mean, really just a do-it-all player from the draw circle ground balls, to shooting and cutting. Really has a really complete game. You see here Rada getting on the side, kicking it off. Really patient. Taylor kind of cuts away, slips on the inside there. Able to finish. Catch it under pressure like that, but really great awareness from Radigan to see her right there on the inside. Quick little release from Taylor. Radigan, her ninth helper of the season. Taylor, in her freshman year, her 39th goal of the season to go with 16 assists, 55 points for the rookie. We welcome all of you that just saw Johns Hopkins beat Maryland in men's lacrosse. We have the Super Bowl of Big Ten women's lacrosse alongside the two-time national champion, a four-time All-American from Northwestern, Taylor Thornton. I'm Dean Linky. delighted to be with you for this one. I'll make it simple for you. Northwestern, number two in the country, 5-0. and oh. They win. They're the outright champion and the number one seed. Maryland at 4-1, and one, if they knock off Northwestern, They'll share the regular season title with Northwestern, but they will earn the number one seed, which automatically puts them in Columbus, Ohio for the semifinals. Simply said, a lot on the line, Taylor. So much is on the line, and this is what you want. You know, last game of the season, you know, big rivalry between both. You know, this is where you want it to go down right before postseason play. That's what's at stake right there on your Big Ten Network screen. Northwestern with early goals from their superstar senior Skane, who, if you missed it earlier, and you may have because we started on the Fox Sports app, Izzy Skane already has told the Northwestern staff she's coming back next year as she heads to the Kellogg Business School, one of the best in the country. Absolutely. That was some great defense by, of course, Samantha White being very patient, really using her footwork, and was able to get that check off, get in to go the other way for the Cats. Solid one-on-one -on -one defense right there. Northwestern outscoring their opponents 85 to 33 in the first period this season, including this 2-0 start. Wow, that's one way to take the clear. Emerson Bolick all by herself. Skeen. Good pass, Radigan. I think Sterling, I don't know if she got a piece of that or not. 
I'm not sure, but that was an excellent pass by Skander Radigan, just coming flying in from low. Just kind of didn't give much Sean, it didn't give a little fake. Sterling was able to read it, well done. Koykendall fakes the behind the back, instead goes with the smoke and it's 3-0. Aaron Koykendall, what a player. Uh, Koykendall, just a woman of mystery. You never know what she's gonna shoot. Is she gonna pass? Is she gonna do it behind the back? Just so crafty with her stick. We see her coming up from the crease right there, has a little rocker step, acting like she's gonna do it behind the back and able to just use her core and rip across. That is not easy to do. Very deceptive, a nice little pump fake behind using that energy momentum to get forward to the cage. Nice rip. Aaron Koykendall, you've heard me tell the story before, like her head coach at Northwestern, Kelly Amati Hiller, a big time soccer player, 40th goal this season to go with 39 assists. Her numbers in basically three and a half years, because in 2020, they barely played. 109 goals, 129 assists, 238 points for Kelly Amante Hiller. 22nd season as the Northwestern head coach. Seven time national champion. You won two for her. She was a two time national champion as a player at Maryland as well. And so this game means so much as she started at Maryland, actually played with Kathy Reese a couple of those seasons as well. So the familiarity is all over. Battle of the legends, plain and simple. Just two legends going at it with their teams. Truly just having coached epic young women, student athletes for years on end. And the legendary nest just continues. Libby May. Libby May, the leading scorer for Maryland. Great save by the Liberty. Leading goal scorer, Cleveringer has 57 points, but May with the 48 goals. Eloise Clevenger, 20 goals and 37 assists. Back over to Libby May, the senior from Sparks, Maryland. As I already told you, she's also coming back next year. A spectacular start for Northwestern. Shot clock under 30. Maryland's doing a good job right now. Move the ball quickly. Oh, right nice there. finish. Yeah, they were Little very May. patient on that one, Dean. You know, really working around, getting a lot of touches, and finding that open person right there in the middle. That was well executed. Good job by Lydia May right here. Kicking it off to the side. She's just kind of hanging in the middle there, waiting for our defender to slide away from her. Pops it right inside. Good finish. So Clevenger with her 38th assist and 58 points. Libby May with her 49th goal and 54 points. Clevenger to May works and it works really well. Very good dynamic duo together. Clevenger kind of working from behind the crease. May really shifty and crafty cutter. Very well timed. 49 goals, one away from 50. 50 is an important number because this is the 50th season of Maryland women's lacrosse, a program that has been the most successful in the entire sport since its start. Maryland has won 15 national championships and 31 conference champs. The Terps have participated in 28 final fours, including 12 of the last 13, and have won 12 of the last 28 national championships, including seven straight from 95 to 2001. Maryland has an all-time program record of 771, 154, and three through 49 seasons. Is that good? Wow. <laughs> Definition <laughs> of excellence, <laughs> of a decorated program. Pretty incredible. That was Abby Bosco picking up the ground ball. So important off the draw on the wings. Here's May. May, good decision, good protection of the ball as well. Stick control out of this world. Victoria Hench. Another player that's going to come back for fifth year. Eight players from Maryland coming back for that additional year, the COVID year. Abby Bosco using her COVID year this year after winning last year's Big Ten Defender of the Year, the transfer from Penn. And that's what you want to see when you're Maryland, like to have that many players returning, building off the year you created from past, the culture, the excellence. It's great going into the next season. So Clevenger will have it. What a season. 20 goals and 38 assists to lead Maryland with 58 points. 
who got there first. Looks like Northwestern ball. Huge. Great hustle play right there. You know, able to back up the cage off that eight meter to get it to go the other way so the Terps don't keep it. Kendall Halpern with the massive backup. Here's Sam White, who we're trying to figure out how to get her a player of the year in some form, you know, midfielder who's went back to defender and I think one of the best players in the country, but there's so many like concrete choices. She's gonna be first team all Big Ten. She might miss out on a particular position player of the year. And she still has time. She's still so young. She's a sophomore, but just talk about a selfless player. Samantha really does it all. She's an anchor down there for her defensive end and a leader on the field. You know, she can get onto the attack, she can shoot. Just a really key piece for the Cats. Koykendall fakes it to Skein. Koykendall, tight pass. Taylor, and Taylor will have an eight meter from a good spot. Yeah, that was a very smart move by Hanson not to shoot them. She saw the defender sliding to her, took her time, found Taylor up top and able to get that eight meter. Really good lacrosse IQ there. Emily Sterling replacing Megan Taylor, the only goalie to ever win the Tawaratan. 14 Tawaratan winners between these two teams. Nine for Maryland, five for Northwestern. Here's Koykendall. Taylor Thornton, a runner up for the Tawaratan as a defender. Radigan, Radigan, read all the way by Sterling. Yeah, great save by Sterling. Radigan really didn't give much on that. It was kind of a straight shot, so easy read for Sterling, but great save. Emily Sterling it comes in with a 9.18 goals against average and 132 saves. High pressure ride here, but the clear. Looks like May is going to earn a whistle. Not sure if there's a card. See the Tawartan Award winners. Nine for Maryland. Three from the Big Ten Network's Taylor Cummings. Northwestern with five. Two from Hannah Nielsen, the head coach at Michigan and Boston College with three. No other school with more than one. Dominance, Maryland and Northwestern in women's lacrosse. Love to see it. That's what I like to see up there, those names. Kathy Reese, what a legend. She won four as a player, three as an assistant at Maryland, went to Denver for three years, came back and just won five as the head coach of Maryland. Amazing. When you think about the fact that she has 12 titles as either a player, an assistant coach, or the head coach of the Maryland Terrapins who find themselves now a player up with a good opportunity to pull the lead to within one. Three early goals from Northwestern, but now the Terps can make it 3-2. Yeah, big possession right here. They've done a really good job of keeping that ball hot. They move it really quickly and they try to find those inside cutters and a little slip cuts from the top and bottom, making it hard for Northwestern to shift quickly. Terps find May, the double team. They move it quickly, asking for it. Edmondson, given back up to Lou Becker. Keep an eye on Shaylin Ahern, number 24. Tight quarters, kind of forced that in there to May, and Northwestern has it. La Liberty. Yeah, good job both ways. You know, Maryland was really trying to use that woman up. They were moving the ball quickly, found that inside, but Northwestern did a good job being patient and really crashing on the inside eight and getting that ground ball. Hannah Lubecker all over La Liberty. And Northwestern fouled right there as that was Jane Hansen, the senior. She'll give it up now to Madison Taylor. Northwestern may want to look to switch the field here, kind of going through traffic, but able to use that good stick work. Taylor coming through the middle, and down to the cat's end, trying to run out this card. Northwestern nine at home, nine and zero at home this season, two and zero in Big Ten play. Most of those games played indoors. Northwestern comes in averaging 18 goals per game. Maryland averaging just under 14. 
goals per game. And Dylan Amati killing off the woman up advantage. That's huge for the Wildcats. Yeah, that was a big stop down there. That was kind of an opportunity for Maryland to close the lead within one, but Cats were able to get that big stop and hopefully can execute down here on the other end. Skane loses it, and a rare missed opportunity for Koikendall to pick it up. But here's Abby Bosco, brings it back to Sterling. Both teams with high rides here, and that's what you expect when you've got the regular season and number one seed on the line. Pointing out Northwestern's already clinched a share, but they don't want to share it. No, 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 <laughs> no way. <laughs> So we got another card here. The other card has been issued to Northwestern's number 24, Kendall Halpern. So Kendall Halpern will get a yellow card. Yeah, every time she just didn't have her feet set at all. When you come in with that horizontal stick and that push right there, it's going to be a cross check. So that was a card. See Kelly Amati Hiller. Words of wisdom for Kendall Halpern, who has been a rock back there, the junior from Woodbury, New York. Kendall does a great job at ground balls, calls to turnovers, really big anchor for the defensive unit. Well, rarely do you see the official get in the way of a pass that close in and around the offensive set. Luckily, no harm, no foul. Keeping the play. See what the Turks can come up with here, woman up. Really nice ball movement, keeping it hot. I didn't say rarely. We saw it with Johns Hopkins in Michigan. Oh, yeah, we sure did. We sure did. Coach McCormick was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't. There's a great finish coming from Shaylin Ahern, the senior from Woodbine, Maryland, has pulled one back for the Terps after falling behind early 3-0. Ahern gets the pass, gets the finish, and it's 3-2. Wildcats by one. does not fall far from the tree. Harley Hiller, just a sophomore, your Illinois state champion for women's wrestling at 105 as a sophomore. She's also the national judo leader. Of course, Kelly Amati Hiller in every Hall of Fame imaginable. Don't forget that man right there, Scott Hiller, a four-time All-American forward at Massachusetts. No surprise that Haley Hiller is an elite level athlete. And by the way, during the season, she wrestles against boys. We didn't have enough time to show the clips of her absolutely smoking boys in wrestling. Incredible. I mean, Harley's been a young legend since she was a little kid when I was there. I mean, just fierce competitor, fun. I love seeing her growing up and just being awesome and dominating at anything that she tries. So that's really cool to see. And apparently, I don't know that much about judo, but I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think in her weight class, in her age, I think she might be number one in the nation. I'm sure she is. <laughs> I bet she's gonna go to the Olympics. I'll be in the stands. I'll be there with the sign for you, Harley, so remember me. <laughs> All right, back to the draw we go. Maryland, four to one control. in favor. Now it'll be four to two. That was huge. Big draw control by Sam Smith there. Well done. Dean Linky along with Taylor Thornton. I just was going to look at the draw control situation, and my main man in stats, Mike Rudolphy, had it right there. He's got his championship game on as well, and I know you do as well. Go it. Behind the cage, Koikendall. How about Koikendall, who's had just unbelievable behind the back goals this year, faking the behind the back and then smoking one in. She truly has one of the best sticks in the game. And you can see Marilyn's doing a really great job at jumping the slide early on Skane. And she's had kind of two missed bobbles there on the end. So they're playing man on man, but Marilyn's sending that double quickly to kind of disrupt her stick and play. They've done a good job at it. Boy, Shaylin Ahern, tremendous effort right there as it was loose to have a little extra gear to win it back. And Marilyn now with a chance to wipe away that early 3-0 lead for Northwestern. Yeah, Ahern is one of those really dominant two-way players. You feel her presence down on D, and she's able to use that speed and transition to get back to the attacking end, you know? Let's not forget she's a legend at the draw, too, so she does it all. 
possession. There's Thomas. Wow, this first quarter is flying along. Really good. Lacrosse we've seen some great saves. We've seen some great goals. We've seen a couple yellow cards as well. We've seen both players fight off, being down a player. And then we've seen the big time talent that is Samantha White. Great defensive effort by Northwestern. They're really working as a unit, you know, sliding right, using that backer defense and able to crash the middle when that ball's on the ground. They got the hot hand. Great job by Samantha White. Good transition. The human clear right there. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> the human clear. She is. The Lake Show. I didn't get a look at. Uh, the cap for Kelly Amante Hiller. On them. Does she have the Lake Show hat on? I think she does. All right. I know she does. That's what I'm talking about. Here's Radigan. What a pickup. Radigan just missing. Boy, did Kelly Amante Hiller light up when I said, hey, I want to know a little bit more about Haley Radigan. She, she was ready to talk she about She was. Her. You know, really quiet, nice kid, but has a little bit of attitude and a mean streak when you're on the field. But that's you want. A competitor. Got to have a little swag out there, and she absolutely does. Here we go. What a great first quarter we've had so far. Back and forth, Skain and Koikido coming up hot. And a nice finish, but Maryland had the response. Al Hansen. Waiting for the whistle. She looks like she's in crank mode here. She is, and she scores. Wow, L. Hansen, a big time goal for L. Hansen. That's her 17th goal of the season. And that's the way you want to end the first quarter right there, right before the horn and the whistle. She cranks up, steps right in, uses that core. That's a monster shot right there to end the first quarter. Great job by Hansen to get the cats up by two. Women's Lacrosse on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Big Ten regular season title on the line. Northwestern has already clinched a share. Maryland hoping to grab a piece of it and that number one seed. We've played one quarter so far. Northwestern had a 3-0 lead. Your score through one, four to two. As again, you break down what's at stake. I mean, the regular season title, you know, in you, they want it outright. They don't want to share. They don't like to share. But, you know, Maryland's chipping away, hoping to get the win, pizza the pie. And again, they lock locking that number one seed with the win tonight. It's going to be a battle to the end. Taylor, massive goal from L. Hansen in the final seconds of the first quarter. Huge. We always talk about momentum shifts. It was kind of back and forth there in the first quarter. But, you know, to end with that eight meter right before one second before the horn went off, that's big. That's the kind of energy you want going in to keep chipping away and hopefully stringing good quarters back to back and together. Samantha Smith, the rock, at the draw for Northwestern, going against Ahern. Two experts at the draw right there. Very good matchup. Six different goal scores in the first period. And it's 4-2. Popped in the air and pulled right out of the air by Ahern. I mentioned those nine Toraton winners. Taylor Cummings, I mean, and she still can do it. In fact, if she wanted to come back and play again for the USA, she definitely could. But I don't remember anybody better at just popping it up to themselves and then running straight downhill and scoring. Yeah, Taylor definitely wrote a master class on the draw. Just was really fun to watch her play. Made it look effortless out there. Good pass. See the draw control story. Five for Maryland. Two for Northwestern. It's interesting as it's opposite on the scoreline. That's a great pass. 
And a finish there from Shaylin Ahern. Hey, you win the draw, you deserve a chance to score. She does. What Maryland does so well, they know how to keep that ball hot. They will move it, and it's extremely difficult on the defensive end to try to shift quickly. They keep it hot, they have a look, don't like it, pop it inside. She's able to have a beautiful slip cut inside, and her finishes. That was really well done by the Terps. Good teamwork. Great finish. Wow, fired up. The senior from Woodbine, Maryland. Like I said earlier, she does it all. I mean, she gets the draw control, gets it down to the Terps attacking end, slip cuts inside, finish. She's on a mission. Scored two already, Taylor. So 17 goals on the season for Ahern. As Marilyn has nine players double digit scoring for Kathy Reese, her 17th season, the winningest coach in program history, 314 and 38, has led the Terps to five national titles, 12 Final Fours, and 22 conference championships. One goal game, Northwestern by one. Ahern again pops it to herself and then is fouled as leaning in on her was Serafina DeMuno, the sophomore from Barrington, Illinois. So we're having a bit of a restart again. Another foul on the play. Two really big draw controls for the Terps, you know, coming back in, nice response. Looking to tie it up here. Chrissy Thomas. Good stick protection by Thomas. Western's pressuring out pretty high. Have that composure, keep those feet moving, move your stick. Clevenger. Clevenger. Good pass, perfect finish. Score for Chrissy Thomas. Tied at four. And Maryland's doing a good job when they're getting into their attacking in, you know? Getting the ball moving, they don't mind the pressure. They're actually coming back at that pressure with their own pressure. Really using their sticks, kicking it behind. Caesar right there just hanging on the wing. Quick little release right between the legs. Nice and crafty there by the Terps. the only player with multiple goals. And to me, what that tells me is, yes, there's depth, but more importantly, it tells me that every player world-class, that's why every year these two are among the top five in the nation, if not one and two with the recruiting classes. Exactly, it's not just one player doing it all. They have threats from all over the attacking end, you know, shooting from behind, up top, cutters. That's really important when you wanna have a championship caliber team. So the Wildcats win the draw. 14 and one on the season. They opened the season at Syracuse, lost by one. Syracuse, the number one team in the country. Northwestern has not lost since that game, which a lot of people are talking about the hype that would come with a rematch perhaps in the championship game. But to be fair, I would not be at all surprised, and some people could say I'm overhyping it, but I would not be at all surprised to see these two teams in the national championship game. Not surprised in the slightest. I mean, Syracuse has just had a monster year, but I think Northwestern is definitely a completely different team than they were in February. And that goes for, you know, most teams in the NCAA. The growth, taking each game, learning from it. By the time spring rolls around, <laughs> it's anybody's game, it's anybody night. I always say that. Skein went high, picked back up by Dylan Amonti, the niece. Of course, her daddy, big time superstar from the NHL. I'm glad we were able to give not only Harley some love, but Scott some love. That guy was a four time All American as Skein is stopped there by Sterling. 
And Sterling, point blank save of Izzy Skane. Yeah, great save by Sterling. Skane didn't have much of an angle there. Usually she slips those by, but Sterling's too good of a goalie. She's reading that every time on the low crease. So Maryland heading the other way after Sterling is, for lack of a better word, Sterling yet again. She has been ever since replacing the Toraton winner in Taylor. To win the Toraton as a goalie, never been done before Taylor, but boy, what a player she was, and her teammates loved her. Yeah, she was something special. Really unique individual out there. Just keeping it moving here. Not minding the pressure at all. Loose ball there. Effort gobbled up again by the stat stuffer Shaylin Ahern, who, as Taylor Thornton said, can do it all for the Terps. Oh, and Ahern was ready to do it all again. And she was fouled as she was looking to receive and finish. Jane Hansen whistled. She really does. I'm telling you, right here, Skane's kind of been doing this all night. She's used to kind of powering in low on that crease, but Sterling's too good. She can read that every single time. Kind of stuff right there. That was going top shelf, yeah. and Sterling read it the entire I know, time. No, she's used to getting those by. Sterling's too good. <laughs> Ahern to give Maryland their first lead of the game, and La Liberty says, "Hey, Miss Sterling, I got what you got. I can do it too." There's the outlet. Needs to be picked up cleanly. And it is. Big, big save by La Liberty. Really good. Keeping the momentum. Keeping it even. Terps would have gone up on that one, but that was a good stop. Getting it back to the Cats attacking end. Both goalies coming up big. Maryland that first period, no goals. One shot in the first 640. Second period, two goals, two shots in the first 98 seconds. So, pretty good pep talk from Kathy Reese, to say the least. Yeah, they came out with a hot hand, that is for sure. Fired up. Skane. Smart to keep that ball moving. They're sending that double early on Skane. She's able to see it up top. Whistle called against Maryland as Amati went down. So Marge Donovan, the grad student, transfer from Princeton with the card. So now Donovan sitting out with the yellow Northwestern with the two minute advantage, releasable on a goal. So Dylan Amante earning that whistle. They got a fresh shot clock. Hoykendall. I don't know. A lot of different thoughts on how much of that time do you use up before you go for one. When you got Aaron Hoykendall, in any kind of position where she can smoke it, I say you go smoke and I'm wrong. Yeah. Important to keep that big possession. Well, that's a massive pickup Huge. after the shot coming from Samantha Smith. And look at Marilyn. Big defensive play for the Terps. Koykendall. Almost won it back. Massive defensive from the Terps. You nailed it, Taylor. And now they can run this out here a little bit, or a lot of it. And that's the type of energy you want. You know, your woman down, need a big stop, and they came up with it. Kind of forced Northwestern to take a bad pass, able to get it back into their attacking end. Try to burn out this card, working it around. That was Bosco on the clear. Northwestern now on defense. They scored three goals in the first six minutes of the first period. No goals in the first six minutes this period. If you remember, Northwestern got that fourth goal with basically no time left in the first quarter. Northwestern here. They put a little bit more pressure, higher than normal. Maryland's just gonna really take their time. 
No need to force. About 37 seconds left on this car. Seconds remaining, 25 on the player advantage. Oh, denied by La Liberty. You do not want to give up a goal when you are playing a man up. And La Liberty, huge right there. Looks like Maryland might get it back, but La Liberty, what a save. Talk about it. I mean, great look inside. La Liberty says, not today. Nice point Blake save right there. Huge. Keeping the Cats defense in this right now. Two-time D1 Goalie of the Year at Tufts University. She already had a job. She was recruited by Kelly and Scott before she went to Tufts. Got the call and said, hey, what do you think? And wanted the D1 experience and why not go to one of the superpowers? And La Liberty has been outstanding. She has, I mean, she has been, that is exactly what she has been, a superpower and weapon for Northwestern on the defensive end. Tied at four. Lou Becker's got that leg wrapped up. Not totally been 100% health wise. Bouncing one in there and a denied again. High or low, La Liberty is ready. White gonna try to clear it herself. Liberty's having a major game. Clevenger, Clevenger with the stick. Ahern, Ahern will lose it. And Ahern will have an eight meter. Remember that play from Eloise Clevenger to win it back. Yeah, Northwestern defense, they gotta, they gotta step up in terms of clearing. That was an uncharacteristic kind of drop there in the midfield. The Liberty's coming up with some big saves. They gotta clear it for him. Aaron has some good hash right here. Pressure on both sides. Ahern was not thinking shot at all. Maryland four, Northwestern four. We'll get updated on the saves for both Maryland and Northwestern as both goalies have been outstanding. Good ball moving by the Terps. Really doing a good job. They're finding the cutters that they want. Taking their time. No real rush passes. Nice pickup by White. Halpern. He's got to be careful. He's already got that one yellow. We saw what happened to Jill Smith in Michigan when she got those two yellows. That changed the game in that game against Johns Hopkins. Completely did. We stay with the Terps here. Almost by the Cats. work with having the hot hand here 15 left Clevenger Clevenger Ahern denied again by La Liberty brick walls Sterling with six saves La Liberty with five saves and we still have five minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half La Liberty is keeping the defensive unit in right now she is coming up with some amazing saves Northwestern really needs to look here to try to capitalize on that great momentum that she's creating for them. Radigan. Radigan, again, the active leader, brought all those goals from Mercer, where she pretty much was a one-person wrecking crew, now joins a team that has Skein and Koikendall. And I have often said, I wish Lauren Gilbert was still around, but with Radigan, with Thomas, with Amante, you don't have to say that anymore. Tell me not to say that anymore. Please don't. I mean, she had big <laughs> shoes to fill, but she came in and made it her own. She's been ripping. I mean, 42 goals in only 11 games. That's incredible. Big time. Here's Taylor, who's been big time. Koikendall. When Koikendall has it, I just kind of sit back and just kind of want to soak it in, including that little scoop pass. Skein, a little trouble there, but backed up by Bolig. Northwestern needs to look for a couple of other options. Oh, Skein, knowing where the shot clock was, had to go behind the back. And I don't think there's going to be enough time here. They might have to leave it, and it will be a shot clock violation. Great defense for Maryland. Yeah. 
really good unit effort right there for the Terps. Johns Hopkins with that win that we talked about. They've clinched the number three seed and will host Rutgers in the Big Ten Tournament quarterfinals. Michigan, the four seed, they'll host Penn State in their Big Ten quarterfinal. Penn State has clinched the number five seed, obviously headed to Ann Arbor. And Rutgers with that win on Thursday night in a game that you and I called a thrilling 13 to 12 win. They were down 12 seven, who do not like seeing that. So hopefully Hanson is okay. Slow to get off right there, hoping the best for her. Elle Hansen, the grad student, her sister Jane Hansen, as Dylan Amati. Maryland, six for six on the clear. Northwestern, eight for nine. But those stats are deceiving because none of the clears have been easy. I mean, look at Izzy Skane. She's so famous for stick checks from behind. Ooh, she may get a card get here. A card, yeah. So Bosco celebrating with Maddie Sanchez, the grad student. Sanchez, one of three players, along with Donovan and Bosco, that have that won't come back next year, so here's Skeen. She had the right, she's on her, but when you extend those arms and get that push kind of right in the ribs there, you're gonna call it. Boy, when you get those yellow cards that early, it really does scare you because it changes the way you play. It changes perhaps even the way she plays where she's so famous from those behind the back stick checks running back it's a great observation absolutely you've got to be much more disciplined than you were earlier because you can't afford to get two because then you're out you know she's a top attacker for the cats you know you don't want to have a situation where you get a second one and you have to sit the rest of the game so now maryland bosco slice it and dyson just a little tiny tot, but man, what a force. She is a fierce competitor. I love watching her play defense. She's all over the place, like a little vacuum cleaner out there, scooping up ground balls. She has a sticky stick. She can get checks off really quick and has awesome speed. Blue Becker. Maryland with Skeen sitting out for another 120 plus. Looking for the perfect shot. Shannon Smith had it for a moment. Behind the cage, force it in. And once again, Northwestern, I don't think either team has had any success with the player up advantage. Every time it seems to be hitting right in the middle of the eight, and it's a 50-50 both ways. No clean, real woman up opportunities so far. Three yellow cards already for Northwestern. This is a big possession here for Northwestern as they're kind of letting this card run out. Really need to get something going here. Haven't had very clean possessions, getting everybody involved, working it around, starting to find a new rhythm here. Well, and Northwestern has been an offensive juggernaut. They've scored double digit goals in every game this season, but sitting at four here with under two minutes remaining in a first half that is just flying along. There are trophies here in case they tie. There are hats here. There are t-shirts here. All of these players know what it means to finish out this game. It's a big game and they, I knew they were all gonna come out and play like it was a national championship caliber type game. The energy, the emotion behind it. You know, you gotta tell people all the time, you gotta leave your records out the door. People are coming to compete tonight. Koi Kandal. That signature behind the back pass to Skane. Skane with a great pass to Taylor. Taylor, I felt like she had an open net right there as she found Sterling out. She might have even hit the pipe. I'm not sure, but she missed the opportunity. Yeah, that was a tough catch. That was well done by Taylor to even make that come in really tight inside. Good hands, able to catch it, but just not able to finish. Shot clock not an issue here. So will Maryland wait? Ahern. Right 
98 seconds. I like this from Northwestern, knowing that Maryland's probably trying to wait. They're not just letting them pass it around effortlessly. They are putting a little pressure on here. They're putting good high pressure on ball, trying to disturb the ball handler, not making it easy. But Maryland's doing a good job of handling that pressure, finding the open player, and a nice hard drive there. Lubecker. And Maryland will have a chance here. Maryland with a chance to take the lead, denied there by La Liberty. You've heard the expression before, it looks like a beach ball. La Liberty and Sterling make it look at that way all the time, and we have gone one half. It's Maryland four, Northwestern four. I know I keep saying it, but La Liberty, that was her quarter. She kept Northwestern in the second quarter right there, coming up with big point blank saves to keep them in this game and remain tied. Western getting off to an amazing start with three early goals. This first half ties the fewest goals Northwestern has scored in a first half this season. Four versus Syracuse. But they had three early. Looked like they were going to have 30 early on, but then Maryland tightened the screws. Yeah, second half there, they had a little bit of issues on the attacking side. The ball was getting jammed on the right side, not really high presented shooting. But, you know, coming back, they got it. We are pleased to be joined by the legendary 22-year head coach of the Northwestern Wildcats, Kelly Amati-Hiller. You just heard us talking about the quick start. Kelly, your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there was some good stuff, some stuff we need to work on. And, um, you know, we just got to play for the next play. We got to play a little bit cleaner. Can't, can't have the yellow cards. I thought that last one was a little bit questionable, but... Um, you know, I, I think we just got to keep playing together, keep moving the ball, and keep putting the pressure on defensively. Molly came up big there in the latter stages of the uh, second quarter. Kelly, going into the second half, any changes that you're looking to make? No, I mean, I, I think, you know, we just have to compete. We have to play for each other. We know Maryland's a great team, and, you know, we have to just come out hard and, and play together. We're gonna We're gonna do it together. Kelly, I think you'll appreciate we showed Harley winning that 105-pound wrestling championship early on. Congratulations. That's big time. Go enjoy your team, and good luck in the second half. All right. Thanks so much. Go Cats. For the number one seed on the line, a great start for Northwestern, including some smoke from Koykendall, but Maryland, like they always do, showing the fight. We have played one half in Evanston, and it's 4-4. Maryland and Northwestern with a number one seed on the line. Under the bright lights in Evanston, it's the Lake Show, it's the Maryland Terrapins, and it's a big time game tied at four at the half. As to be expected, I knew it was going to be back and forth, emotions were high. You know, it's really going to be about who can make a stop and play together and grind this out. You know, no one's going to, I don't think we're going to have any runaway type of score. Terps have done a great job moving that ball really well, finding those inside cutters. Northwestern still yet to find a little bit of their attacking flow, getting more people involved, but just got to keep shooting. How about the story of the goalies? As we mentioned, whoever wins this game might win the Big Ten Goalie of the Year. Sterling, six saves. La Liberty, six saves. All of the saves have been outstanding. I mean, they're both playing lights out. I mean, it's low crease. They're taking high shots from Dodgers and just really playing sound games on both sides. There is Sterling. Emily Sterling. Joined by the 17 year head coach for the Maryland Terrapins, the legend that is Kathy Reese. Really nice response, Kathy, after falling behind 3 0. Your thoughts on the resiliency of your team? Yeah, you know, I, I love the way we're playing right now. We need to do a better job of finishing on the offensive end. I think we've had some great looks, and, um, you know, their goalies had some great saves. And this is a hard fought game. These teams are battling out here. It's a, it's a fun night. 
Kathy, what would you say are the keys going into the these last two quarters? Um, for us, discipline on defense. You know, they're a really strong offensive team. I love how our defense has been playing. Emily's made some great stops. Our D is, has played uh, very well together. I think offensively, we just need to finish on, we need to finish on the shots that we're getting. And, um, just haven't loved some of those endings of those plays earlier, but hopefully the second half will have more opportunities to do so. Indeed, wonderful first half. Good luck in the second half and good luck in the postseason, Thanks, Coach. Guys. Uh, Thanks, guys. Kathy Reese, the great coach, the Maryland Terrapins. There's Abby Bosco, the reigning Big Ten Defender of the Year. Decided to come back for one more year. And that certainly did not disappoint Kathy Reese at all. Trying to stay loose. I mean, you could just feel it getting colder too, right? Like they had that shot of whatever that snow or rain, well, I don't know what it was, but it's definitely cold right now. Yeah, full parkers are coming out, <laughs> gloves bundling up. All right, back to the second half we go. Big draw control for Northwestern right here. Good momentum going into this third quarter. Outside Taylor Thornton, Dean Linky, as we are outside. All of the other games we've done this year featuring Northwestern have been indoors. You see Northwestern's amazing record, 14 and one. Clevenger wins it back. And again, reminding you what's at stake. Northwestern already knowing that they're gonna win another regular season title. It looks like a card has been issued. That'll be the fourth card on Northwestern. Western, if they can somehow win this, so Maryland will play a player up as Carly Mahoney, the junior out of Mendham, New Jersey, with the yellow card. That's a tough yellow card there for the Cats. Prime opportunity for the Terps. Woman up here, take advantage. Looking to go up one. Maryland now with the woman up advantage. Lou Becker. Looking for May. Scooped out of there. Extra effort. Ground ball picked back up by Maryland. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Now Maryland could have a chance here as Northwestern was headed the other way only to have it won back by the Terps. Right now the Terps are winning those 50-50 ground balls. They're getting after them which is allowing them to have second chance opportunities at Cage. Look at that play. Wow. La Liberty. Big time. Loving that energy from La Liberty. Hopefully she can get her D getting going here. Feed off some of that fire. Molly La Liberty and Molly La Liberty. Read that one all the way. Two big time plays that sequence. Down a player. Don't worry about it. I got this, says Molly La Liberty. Huge all night. We're going to be calling her game the whole rest of the night, but they got to take care of the ball and transition here. Nice speed. It's Jane Hansen. She'll give it to L. Hansen. How many times they have thrown it back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Playing catch, now playing catch on one of the biggest stages in women's lacrosse. So Skein will run out the player advantage and that'll allow them to get Mahoney back in there. Big possession for Northwestern right here. Still plenty of time, but really looking to get a good look at Cage. Good touches, moving the ball quickly, trying to get a few more people involved. Emerson Bolig in, there's Taylor. Koykendall fakes the crank. This is usually where she likes to shovel to Skane. Skane remains on the other side. Taylor. Taylor going backwards to protect the ball. Good pass. Wow, what a pass. L. Hansen with the finish. Found an open player and delivers the goal. Great job by Northwestern being patient on that offensive unit. Moving the ball really well. Madison Taylor, great job seeing that cross cage pass. El Hansen with a nice quick finish there. Good release.
Northwestern 5, Maryland 4. Need to remind you that for the biggest Big Ten experience, there's no plus like home. The Big Ten Plus app powered by the Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe now. 5-4 Northwestern. Hanson giving Northwestern the lead here. Plenty of time left in the third. Hanson sixth on the team in goals with 18. Taylor, by the way, the only Northwestern player with both a goal and an assist tonight. That was a big time pass from Taylor to Hanson. Great vision, just excellent lacrosse IQ, able to see that cross cage pass, Hanson down low, able to finish, putting the Cats up top. 18th goal of the season for Hanson. As we're at Martin Stadium in Evanston, Illinois. Thornton, Dean Linky, Smith. Knocked to the ground after starting at the draw. We need to hang tough there. Right off the draw, getting these 50 50s. Getting a little chippy, but just making sure everybody's okay. Northwestern has a chance now. Woman up. See if they can take advantage of this card. Abby Bosco. Sixteen shots, five in the back of the cage for the Wildcats. Thirteen for the Terps. Four have found the back of the cage. Just a one-goal lead. Player advantage, though, and it'll be an eight-meter opportunity for Taylor. North North West West good West quick West restart West there West by the Cats. Moving it around on that woman up play. Able to hit Taylor right there. Hard drive. Catch that eight-meter. So Taylor just mentioned the only player with a helper and a goal. But you gotta believe she's gonna shoot this. And she is. Score 6 4 Northwestern. The freshman, Taylor, continues to tear it up for Northwestern. To be so young and have that type of confidence and poise, especially on the eight meter, you know, she has pressure on both sides of her right here, but able to get a really quick first step. Nice cradle in there, fake high, shoot low. Really textbook eight meter by the freshman. Put the cats up by two. Big play. That came after Maryland. Taking the lead on draws, but then the yellow card now releasable, but it's a two goal lead. 40th goal this season, second tonight for Madison Taylor, who's gotta be considered in the running, of course, for Big Ten Freshman of the Year. I believe she's the eight-time Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Yeah, you can <laughs> make some deductions from right. that stat. <laughs> <laughs> My calculations, I feel like uh, she's high up there. One by Northwestern. So now it's, they're dead even. 6-6 six, six from the draw. 6-4 in the score for the Wildcats. Yeah, good draw control by Emerson Bolick right there. Really understanding her space. Nice little scoop. Getting it back to keep this momentum here that the Cats seem to have. Quakendall. <laughs> I just felt like she was thinking, all right, what? Can I sneak around there and go ahead and <laughs> take one myself? Gives it up Always. to Skane instead. Always crafting some tricks down there. Skane, good spin. Denied by Sterling. Sterling has had Skane's number so far. She's been able to read him. Got to give her a different look. Radigan. Foul. As Radigan knocking to the ground. Brianna Lamoro, a senior. She's another one of those players coming back for a fifth year. Eight of them for Maryland. Eight fifth year players will be back next year for the Maryland Terrapins. Yeah. An unforced pass trying to find May. Unforced error right there. Keeping in the cat stick. Seeing if they can clear this clean. Radigan, May with one goal, Ahern with two, 
Thomas with the other goal. Those are the goal scorers for Maryland. Northwestern, Taylor's got two. Al Hansen's got two. Izzy Skeen's got one. And Aaron Koykendall has one. Those are your 10 goal scorers in this game with 9.45 remaining in the third. Northwestern running this kind of little two-man play here, allowing Koykino to get open there off a of pick and roll. Stays with the Cats on this side. Skane, spinning around, running into three black jerseys. I would say Lamoureux was not happy with that call. Wearing number four, Skane will have it. Yeah, they've been jumping the slide early on Skane, right? But she's just such an offensive presence and powerhouse. Really making her work for every goal and every shot. So Skane, one goal on six shots so far. Taylor, so pull it back. Koykendall is getting ready to step into it. Amati. Taylor, Koykendall. Skane with the high screen. Off of the screen, Koykendall bumped to the ground. It's getting tough, both sides are playing hard. Lots of hard fouls inside the eight. Moscow's got a yellow card as well, right? She does, yeah. Gotta be careful. Koykendall waiting for the whistle. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Koykendall. Hmm. Extra pass. Taylor still loose. Taylor picks it up. And one back by Maryland. I know it wasn't the best angle, but with the shot clock at nine, I wouldn't mind to see if Koykendall could have sizzled that one. Yeah, she usually rips those. I was surprised as well, but she was trying to look for a cutter, and she was there, just kind of bobbled it there inside the eight. Tough, tough catch to make. Now Koykendall, green card, looks like descent, I would say. Is that your guess? Yeah. Foul's dead even. 14 apiece. By the way, Taylor, the third Northwestern player to reach 40 goals this season to go with Skeen, 73. Koykendall is 40. Koykendall will sit down as Koykendall also has just about as many assists as goals, almost dead even. Right now, and this goes for both teams, just really trying to clean up the fouls and the yellow cards. It's tough, you know, it's a little bit wet out there from the weather conditions, and again, just the high emotion behind it all, but whoever can kind of really lock in here to clean up the little errors will find success. Yeah, we'll start to see if they can start finding Libby May a little bit more. Coming off a 64-goal season, came into this one at 48, now at 49. Good spin all the way around and a tremendous finish. I believe it's Clevenger. We'll confirm it here in a moment, but it's a Maryland goal. Yes. Yeah, excellent job by Clevenger, doing what she does best, doing a little dance behind the cage. Such great footwork, really crafty with her stick. Nice way to bring it on the left side. Nice little hop skip there. Finish in the back of the cage. Really well done. What a story it's been for Eloise Clevenger. Most of you know it. Lost her mom, Elizabeth, just a couple weeks ago. Sat out the Johns Hopkins game, went and saw her mom, came back, had a career record, a program record, eight assists against Ohio State. Mom passed away the next day. The entire team attended the funeral before the Penn State game. A big reason why they were a little flat. That young woman right there, what a daunting season it has been as we send our deepest respects and sympathies to the entire Clevenger family. Absolutely, just talk about 
such resilience and strength that, that young woman is presenting tonight and just moving forward. Her sister, Macy, one of the top players in the country, will be headed to Maryland as well. They tend to keep it in the family at Maryland. Lax crew, lax fam, keep it in-house always. Well, you think about the amazing history, 50 years, and nobody's ever had eight assists in a game. And under those conditions, to have it against the Buckeyes and set a program record, pretty special. Yeah, playing for a lot, much bigger than herself. Skeen, nice pass, what a finish, Taylor. Skeen to Taylor. Laser pass, laser finish. Just excellent connection by both Skein and Taylor. Really working that ball, very calm, steady. Taylor comes flashing from the low post right to the middle and a really quick finish. Good vision by Skein there. You see right here, dancing up top a little bit. Fires down low, two people are looking at her. Taylor's wide open, nice finish there. Taylor. Out of those 20 shots. And Taylor with a hat trick and an assist. She's everywhere tonight, flying around. I mean, first time you're playing Maryland with so much on the line, and she's like, ah, no big deal. Another day, she's fearless. I yeah. like it. Playing with swag, some attitude. She's confident. That's what you want to see. 41st goal this season, third tonight. She keeps it. Good draw control right there. Looking to get it clean. Extra pass to Skane. Monty, Monty, now Radigan, Radigan. Really good ball handling by there by Radigan. That was tough, it's slippery conditions out there. Nice hard drive inside to the eight. Got a double team there, but really has to keep her feet moving. Stick protected. Looking to get on the board here tonight. Pressure both sides, but a nice vision to Cage. See if she'll let her rip. Handled there by Sterling. You gotta give more on Sterling. You know, the usual crank and rips are not gonna work on her. She's too good. You gotta either use your speed getting in or you gotta give her a little fake. Can't just shoot high to high. She's gonna eat that up all day. So we got a timeout here with 5.58 remaining in the third. Big Ten regular season trophy is in the house. It's Northwestern 7, Maryland 5. And a league loaded with big time goalies. Hard to argue with the abilities of Emily Sterling for Maryland and Molly La Liberty for Northwestern. You called it at the beginning, Dean. It was gonna be a showdown of the goalies and they have given us quite the show this evening. I mean, coming up with point blank saves, keeping their team and defensive units in this game. It's been an awesome sight to see. Eight saves for Sterling, seven for La Liberty. It's always cool to see them without their helmets on as well, because you yeah. never know what they look like. <laughs> full face, good to full person. <laughs> Evanston, Illinois, Martin Stadium, outdoors. Western already clinching a share of the regular season title with that 5-0 record. Maryland hoping to also grab a share and that all-important number one seed. How important? Well, it means you go straight to Columbus. You are already in the Big Ten semifinals and you play at the brand new Ohio State 
lacrosse stadium. I can't wait to be there. It's going to be awesome. I mean, it's beautiful just from the drone footage that we've seen. It's a perfect venue to host such a big event. Wow, wide open opportunity from Maryland and a rare miss as Liberty didn't make the save. It was just a missed shot. Yeah, she was wide open there and request was pretty lucky. Just miscommunication there left her wide open. Tight pass somehow. Caught there. Samantha Smith, I think, was whistled. Unfortunate there. Northwestern was right there. That was actually pretty good defense. Just got her stick caught and got called for that hold, but she was on that cutter nice and tight. So Clevenger. Clevenger. Boy, right at the final moment. The defense closing down, forcing that one to go behind. It's backed up though by Maryland. Shot clock winding down to five. They need to hurry. Northwestern, good slide moment to go, and they'll throw it away. Huge defensive work by the Wildcats. Nice, good set. Nice momentum shift there for the Cats. Playing that full 90 out. No, st no goal. Both teams, Taylor Thornton, 10 of 11 on clears. And as I say that, the clearance for Northwestern is thrown away, so they're 10 of 12. These types of conditions, you gotta rein it in. You can't just launch one there. Didn't really keep her feet moving to the pass and missed it. Especially in the lights, you gotta really learn to adapt to the elements that you're in. Well, and the other thing is that failed clear in combination with the fact that Northwestern has won seven of the last nine draws, but only have a two goal lead. If you're Maryland, you're feeling pretty good that you're only down two. Exactly. You know, Northwestern has a few turnovers, but again, I said earlier, Maryland's coming up with those 50-50 challenges and those ground balls and are able to come back and execute on their offensive end. This last 60 seconds, a little sloppy, I think, is the best way to say it. And again, the conditions aren't that great. That one's red just perfectly by, by La Liberty. La Liberty with eyes in the back of her head knew not to release because there was a Maryland player behind. Halpern will give it up. That's a good pass. That's one way to get the clear back on. And now Jane Hansen will do the rest. Yeah, Hansen has great speed, but here's where you need your leaders to step up. You gotta set the tone right now. After a couple of missed passes, back and forth, kind of unfirst errors, get everybody back in the rhythm, calm down, and find your shots. Bolick now back over to Taylor. Radigan, oh, I have no idea how she did it, but it's 8-5 Wildcats. Haley Radigan with the score. I knew it was only a matter of time before we were calling out her name, and Kelly was talking to us before the game. She can slice and dice. She has such good quick feet, able to get into small, tiny little spaces and still be able to really rip low. That's a hard shot, not easy to do, but that's a very Haley Radigan-esque shot right there. Well done. So a goal and assist for Haley Radigan, as I mentioned, leads all active players with 271 career goals. She just needs two more to be 10th all time in the sports history. At a season high six goals against Ohio State, added five against Youngstown State, then did three goals and added an assist in her debut for the Wildcats against Vanderbilt. Transferred to Northwestern from Mercer, where she is the program's all-time leader in goals. La Liberty and Radigan via the transfer portal, which is rare for Kelly Amati Hiller to even look at. But man, she looked at it, and those are two big-time players. She's like, I gotta scoop them up real quick. <laughs> You know, Radigan's a silent sniper, I like to call her. Very quick, crafty, really strong shots. Back to the draw we go in favor now of Northwestern. Popped in the air by Smith. 
pulled out of the air by number 24, Shaylin Ahern. And, but they'll say no, some sort of infraction on the clip. So to come back to White and Northwestern, she'll give it up quickly to Radigan. And now you feel like Uncle Mo is definitely in favor of the home team. Yeah. Again, across game momentum. I don't know how many times in game of runs I can say that, but it's really how you're stringing good plays together, making stops, getting it back into your attacking end to get points on the board. Still plenty of time for a Kathy Reese coach team. Kathy Reese 56 and 9 against Big Ten opponents and 9 and 4 against Northwestern. Skein looking for Koikendall. Koikendall somehow picked that up and did enough to keep it alive for Hansen. Big ground ball right there to keep it back on their side. Koikendall fakes the back door again, decides not to shoot it. I think it was there. Koikendall looking for Radigan, and Radigan plowed to the ground by Ahern. I just got to mention, that was beautiful stick handling and stick work by Koikendall. I mean, to come around that crease, good hands. Able to see that cutter in the middle. Get a free position out of it. Boy, unfortunate foul because Radikin did not field it cleanly. But gets this chance, and she'll smoke it home. Radigan, second goal of the game. And the Wildcats with a four-goal lead, their biggest lead of the game. Doing what she does best, you know, early in the first and second quarter, those weren't falling, but when you're a shooter, you just got to keep shooting. They'll start to fall. And in this third quarter, they absolutely have. Really ripping back, ripping through her core. Nice low shot. Very hard to save with that kind of speed and sauce behind it. Back-to-back -back goals from Radigan when she scored that one right before this one. She became the fifth Northwestern player to score a goal tonight. It's worth mentioning that Maryland is 0-3 this season when they score seven goals or less in a game. They are sitting on five. Northwestern's done a good job right now of it really building upon each play, and that's what we want to do, just keep chipping away and grinding, as Kelly was mentioning in her halftime interview. We've got to stick together. Keep working. It's going to be a battle to the end. Maryland is right in this thing. Do not let them, do not think four goals down. They're not in this. They absolutely are. Radigan now just one goal away from becoming 10th all time in the history of Division I women's lacrosse. Wow, that's incredible. Bosco picks it up. By Maryland. Western three unanswered goals in the last five and a half minutes, and that's why the score is Northwestern nine, Maryland five, with one minute remaining in the third. Draw controls dead even. Score line not though, as Maryland, they were down 3-0, came back, actually took the lead, and now they're down four. Big possession here by the Terrapins. Looking to close this gap a little bit before going into the fourth quarter. Oh. See if Northwestern can get a good stop here. Yes, oh, turnover, unforced. They may get credit for a cause turnover, but I don't think they should. Yeah, just a missed pass there, but key stop for Northwestern. So here comes the Lake Show. They make the long throw. Picked off, though, by Maryland. Maryland's got time here. Running downhill, three seconds left. Northwestern forcing it just a little bit, and they're not going to get a shot off. Wow. What a great third quarter for Kelly Amati Hiller, for Haley Radigan, and the Northwestern Wildcats. Northwestern outscoring Maryland 5-1 to one in the third. They lead it 9-5 to five through three in Evanston. July 15th, the BTN Big Ten K returns to Soldier Field in Chicago for the fantastic 10K and 5K races and tailgate parties. Scan the QR code or register right now at btnbig10k.com. That'll be just down the road from this field right here on the banks of Lake Michigan, where Northwestern will head into the fourth quarter. 
trying to go to 6 and 0 in the Big 10 and claim that number 1 seed and claim the Big 10 title all to themselves. They lead it 9 to 5. Kelly Amanti Hiller, coach Taylor Thornton, she joins me Dean Linky and here we go to the fourth. Great third quarter by Northwestern. Coming out of that half, that's what you want. You want to get out there, start doing the little things well and finding the back of the net. I said it before and I'll say it again. Maryland is right in this thing. They know how to grind. They know how to get themselves out of holes. 15 minutes is a ton of time. This is going to be a battle until the final whistle. Third quarter massive, though, for Coach Monty Hiller and the Wildcats. 5-1 to one in the third. Situation from the draw, dead even. The fouls are dead even. The turnovers are dead even. The cause turnovers are dead even. Clears 11 for 12 for Maryland, 11 14 for Northwestern. So Maryland's been pretty good defensively as Northwestern's trying to clear, but the score line four on top, nine five, and another ground ball picked up by White. Great draw control. White all by herself. Look, these are human beings as well, and you know the deal. You know what's on the line, and then when you have the lead, you come back, you go to the draw, you win it. You can see Northwestern can clinch the outright title. You gotta believe that affects you a little bit. It has to, and it does, but the thing is, you gotta keep your foot on the gas. You cannot get complacent for a second. If anything, Maryland's gonna turn their motor on even higher, and Northwestern needs to do the same. But, you know, it's tough. You get a little bit nervous out there, and you know how much is at stake, but at the end of the day, as long as they're sticking together, you know, play together to the end. Able to get the ball back there. Cat's working it around. Good time left on the clock. Keep the ball hot. Skane. Koykendall, smoke again, and it's 10-5. Great play by Northwestern right there, the two-man duo with Skein and Koykendall. Really poised on that left side high elbow. Skein able to kind of take it up top here. You see, really easy. Acting like she's gonna drive, Koykendall cuts through. They're so worried about Skein. Koykendall's left wide open in a spot she loves. Really great finish. Boykendall, Spencerport, New York, Spencerport High School. Multi-sport star, phenomenal soccer player, much like Kelly Amati Hiller, who was an All-American soccer player at Maryland. And they have reason to be dancing around. They have doubled up the lead here, 10 to five, 25 shots for the Wildcats, 17 for Maryland. Battle between Smith and Ahern. Smith with just the advantage of nine to eight. Now it's nine nine. Terrific draw control. The Wildcat goes with a 13 Good box out there in the circle by the Terps. Number two, Aaron Kuykendall. Her second goal of the game. 41st goal of the season. In the draw, a score here. So important for Maryland. Victoria Hench behind the cage. Whistle going against Allie Berkeley. Shannon Smith will give it up. This is Corey Edmondson. Edmondson. Really good ride there by Samantha White. Excellent lock on defense. Really able to get her stick in her path using her feet. May. Cuts it back, May spinning, shooting, red all the way by La Liberty. Oh, that was a good save by La Liberty right there. You can see here, May did a good job kind of dive, diving there. Trying to do a little skip, jump, skip. La Liberty eats it up. Kind of 
sit for that. Yep. It's a card. Dangerous shot. That was huge. Not only did you get the save, that's why she was so fired up. She got the save, and she also knew it meant a yellow card for the leading point getter for Maryland in May. The leading goal scorer, rather, is Clevenger is the leading point getter. They're so close. Clevenger and May, they've been going back and forth They're right together as May will sit out. That is massive, though, in Northwestern. Still a lot of time here, but you gotta believe that they're gonna use a lot of the shot clock here. Right, try to kill some time, burn a little bit off. No need to force a shot or pass right there. See if they can get this ground ball, just take their time. In good control here. Keep the ball hot, find that open player. Good save by Emily Sterling. Really key play for their defensive end for the Maryland Terrapins. See if they can clear this here with ease, coming down. Setting something up. Still about 52 seconds left on that card. See if they can shave that time off. Western applying some high pressure here on ball. Going out way almost to the 30 here. Really making him work. You're gonna have to use some good footwork here. Back with Ahern. It's been terrific all night. So Maryland trying to burn down that advantage, but also cut into the lead. Tremendous stick check by Northwestern. Great job by Hansen. She's all over that stick. Jane and Elle Hansen have been outstanding. They have. Been a part of some real key moments tonight. Good pass in front, La Liberty. How good has La Liberty been? Terrific. <laughs> like truly terrific across the board. But I gotta get it up to Mahoney right there, staying tight on that cutter, putting pressure, making it really hard for her to receive that pass. But again, the Liberty just coming up with that save like she has been doing all night long. Nine saves apiece. They may have to go to co-goalies of the year, to be fair. They I'm may. here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. It has been back to back all night. Just so technically sound, confident, I mean, if you're starting a team, you'll, you'll take either one of them, would you not? All day. I'd have to put the point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, yes. Either way, you win. <laughs> See, they're sending that slide early on her. Western can find that. Of a tough pass there, a lot of traffic. Good ground ball by Maryland. See if they can get a good clear here, cross, get something going on their offensive zone. A lot of pressure there by Skane, just a little too close, but really nice pressure overall. Really trying to make them uncomfortable. Bosco. Ahern. Now behind the cage is Thomas. Western coming out here. Allen's passing it off. It's been so great all season long. Really strong hard dodge right there. Loses it a little bit. White. White earns the whistle. Northwestern wins it back. Northwestern sitting on 10 goals. They've scored in double digits in all 16 games this season. They've got four players with multiple goals tonight. Talk about death. Talk about talent. Talk about teamwork. That's what you want to see. People stepping up in big time shows, big time games. Everyone's getting a piece of the pie tonight. Yeah. 
Northwestern really just looking to take their time here. Maryland's really sitting that double early on in this game. They've been able to find a kind of that open backside player the past few possessions. Madison Taylor with a nice hard dodge. To draw that shooting space, smart play. Grab the hash here. An area she's quite familiar with. Seeing if she'll let it rip on this one. Skane. Skane. Came out high. Backed up by Radigan. Northwestern with a plus 12 scoring margin in the fourth period this season, including tonight. Oh my, Radigan, so sneaky. She is a, another weapon for a team loaded with weapons. She's the secret weapon, the secret sauce to this team has just been a, such a phenomenal addition to the attacking in for Northwestern. Coming in hard on that left side, kind of stops. Looks like she's gonna pass, she's like, oh. Just gonna shoot her right around you. Really good job by Radigan right there. Forty-fifth goal this season, third tonight. She's come up really, really well tonight in the second half. So Kelly Amante Hiller's team with a six-goal lead on 28 shots and. Yeah, she's bouncing around like she wants to get out there and grab that stick and play. I know she does. She would play with us all the time. I'd be like, girl, you're still out here <laughs> doing wind sprints? <laughs> she's a competitor at heart. I wonder what she's like watching Harley wrestle in judo, if she's quiet or emotional, if she's chilling. I don't know. I want to see that. That would be a sight to see. Right? I don't know. I haven't been around it. I'm sure the same kind of demeanor that she has with the cats with her squad. You know, I bet. And remember when I asked her, like, how have you dealt with the fact that your niece is on the team? And yeah. she's pretty direct. She almost put up, you know, an extra layer there just to make sure there was no favoritism. There truly isn't. She was always there for all of us, you know. We were like her kids, you know. If we had a problem, if we needed something, had us over to the house. She's great. She's such a phenomenal leader and taking the time out here. Cats are up six. Going into the last seven minutes here, fourth quarter. Northwestern 11, Maryland 5. To take a look at our State Farm State of Success brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Easy game, doing what she does best, taking a dodge right there, hitting the corner low. But you know, the Terps have done a good job on her tonight in terms of doubling, and she's had to have a little bit more of assisting patterns tonight, and she has done just that. Fighting quick and all right there for a nice rip, really using her lacrosse IQ to keep her cats in the game. Two years removed from 98 goals. I was pretty certain she was going to get 100 this year. She actually had to sit out a couple games because of a minor injury, so that slowed that part of the skiing train down. But I don't think she cares about 100 goals. I think she cares about an outright Big Ten title and a run for that eighth national championship for the Wildcats. You got it exactly right. She doesn't care if she scores as long as her team's coming up with that dub tonight. It's all that matters. Got to go together as a team. Can't do it alone. Fourteen in a row for the Wildcats and just that one goal loss to the number one team in the country. Skeen trying to create her own opening. Denied by Sterling, who's been every bit as good as La Liberty. She has, and I said it earlier, you know, with Sterling, you cannot just, you know, usually those rips will work for them, but she's able to read those if you don't give her a little fake. Oh, picked off by Taylor. Back over to Radigan. Sorry, Taylor. No, that was a great, great interception <laughs> there for the Cats. Madison Taylor, as I interrupt Taylor Thornton. That's huge. Ooh, that could really hurt. Yeah, that, that's what you call one of those momentum shift type of plays. Oop, and almost back again. Able to hang on to it. Just find a rhythm here. Slippery, bright lights, different conditions. Got to really lock in here on the last five. Koikendall 
lot of confidence oozing out of this Northwestern team. Since it was 4-4 at halftime, Northwestern has scored seven of the eight goals and the last five in a row. Look at Koykendall, sneaky. You know, cooking up something over there. <laughs> <laughs> Koykendall earning a tough angle, eight meter. Maryland with zero shots in this fourth period with five minutes remaining and two seconds. The Terps haven't seen it much down on their end and time's kind of slowly ticking away here. Koykendall pulled out last time, denied low there by Sterling. They sound like a broken record. Sterling is too good for it just to step an eight meter rip. She is able to read those. You gotta give her more of a fake, make her move her body, give her something to bite and then shoot. She's gonna read those other ones all day long like she has tonight. Sterling. Now with 12 saves, 12 saves for Sterling. Huge cause turnover right there. Way to just stay on that backside hip and stick. Bringing it back to the Cats in. Really great hustle play by Northwestern right there. Sterling may need to make another save. Hansen has it knocked away. Skane is there. And it'll come back to Maryland. 12 saves for Sterling, four short of her career high. Would it surprise you to know who she had her career high against last year? Who was it? It was Northwestern Wildcats. Of course Cats. it was, <laughs> of course it was. 16 saves in that one. Big players step up for the big I'm games, right? I'm telling you, these types of matches, people play lights out, no matter who you are, but especially those top players, they raise their game to another level. Meanwhile, La Liberty with eight saves on the other side. Radigan, Radigan with four, and Northwestern rolling 12. Patience by Northwestern. Very calm. Koykendall doing what she does best. Lighten it up. Great assist. Radigan's able to rip inside. Really great teamwork by the Cats. All four goals for number 77. Radigan coming in this half. The fewest goals that Maryland has scored this season is seven. Three times are still sitting on five as Radigan. 46 goals this season. And I'll tell you what, if you were drafting, you would pick her. Speaking of draft choice, a couple years ago, the Bears took Justin Fields, a Big Ten champion out of Ohio State. He came to practice today, the star quarterback for the Chicago Bears. How cool is that? I love that. Real knows real. I love <laughs> that champ seeing him meet each other. I bet that was a really cool experience for the Cats. I love that he did that. Well, Northwestern's awesome. known as Chicago's team, so Chicago Bears are part of all that love. Oh, yeah, we're right up there with them. <laughs> Don't you forget about it. I won't. <laughs> I'll do whatever you say, Taylor, just so you know. Count on that. Oh, yeah, the Bears could use some of Northwestern's secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Call them up. Well said. <laughs> what a nice treat, though, to have Justin Fields really started to come on last year for the Bears. Mm -hmm. Draw control story here as, as we mentioned, the human effect playing a role as well as all of a sudden Maryland has turned that upside down. It's good ball moving by the Cats there. Working on wide open down low. Able to draw that eight meter free position. 12 9 advantage from the draw control. Here's Koykendall. Koykendall with two goals and an assist. Koykendall, 41 goals and 40 assists on the season. Remarkable numbers. You just don't see that kind of balance like that at that high of numbers. So high and well-rounded. Just it, Truly, she's a one-of-a-kind player, you know, and she just makes it look effortless. And I think that's the beauty of it all when she's out in the field. And you know, Kelly talked about how she's really able to get everybody involved on the attacking end, really brings and is the glue to this attacking unit. Skeen 
just missing. Good effort by Maryland, tremendous effort. They'll say Northwestern got there first, but really good effort from the Maryland Terrapins. Yeah, good hustle by Kennedy Major. Almost had it, good speed. So close. Spinning, Radigan looking for five, read there by Sterling. Sterling now 13 saves, three away from her career high. Set a year ago against these Wildcats. Time running out though on the Terps. Dehern coming hard to cage. The Terps. Earn that number two seed. And take on the Buckeyes. Rolling around. Good job by Maryland. They never stop fighting. Score there from Chrissy Thomas. Yeah, great job by Chrissy Thomas right there. Really well poised. Took her time behind the cage. Really drew her defender out there. Great footwork. Pops off that right foot. Realizes she has her. Gets that inside right shoulder in. Nice little fake high shoot low. Great finish. Second tonight, 14th goal of the season for Chrissy Thomas. here. Only takes six seconds for the draw to score. Seeing if they can get something rolling. Maryland, those Toratown winners, Caitlin McFadden Phipps, 2010. Three times Taylor Cummings won it. Zoe Stukenberg, Chad Adams, Katie Schwarzman won it a couple times. Great job control there for the Cats to get in there in to hopefully run down this clock. Good job, Sam Smith. Twelve nine advantage in the Northwestern Wildcats will go undefeated in Big Ten play. A spectacular season as they will move to 15 and one, 10 and 0 at home, 15 in a row. They're only lost by one, 16 to 15 to open the season against Syracuse. They beat Boston College. They beat North Carolina from start to finish. They beat Penn State by 10. And now the number 12 team in the country they have a six goal lead. Looking for Koikendall. They'll lose it back to Maryland, but it won't matter. Northwestern, you said they don't like to share. Koikendall scores 13 to 6 to put a little icing on the cake. Koikendall and the Wildcats are your Big Ten regular season champs with just a second to count off Erin Koikendall. I don't even know how she got that pass. I don't even like she just kind of swooped it right in her stick, but talk about a way to end the regular season. I mean, what can Erin Koikendall do? I mean, nice hard redefend by the Cats here, picked up the ground ball, sees the goalie stepped out, tosses it right in. And Northwestern has won it. Your 2023 Big Ten women's lacrosse regular season champs all by themselves, a perfect 6-0. and oh. Raise it high, Northwestern, the regular season champs and the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament. We will see them in Columbus, Ohio in one of the two semifinals. That's how important it is that they won this game against Maryland.
And we are joined by the head coach of the 2023 Big Ten regular season champion, Northwestern Wildcats. A complete performance in the second half. Coach, how's it sound to say 6-0 regular season champs of the Big Ten? Honestly, it sounds great. Um, you know, this group has been unbelievable, working hard, playing for each other. And, uh, you know, I think the defense in particular really stepped up today. And, you know, we know Maryland is a, a great opponent. Um, they've had a great season, so congrats to them. And um, we're just really, really proud of this group. And I'm really proud of my staff as well. Congratulations, Kelly, on an amazing regular season. You talk about the growth of this squad. Just truly, what are you most proud of in like the efforts and strides they've taken so far in this regular season? I, I, I just think, you know, working for each other. I mean, we've been talking about that a lot. We've been talking about, you know, bringing energy. It's not easy, um, you know, to continue to better your performances each week. And, you know, this group has really focused in on that and has really worked at doing that. Um, so it was a pleasure to, to have this game here in front of our home crowd. We really thank uh, all the fan faithful and, you know, just a, a great game for the sport. And, you know, we don't take this lightly. Winning a championship is an incredible thing, and I'm really proud of this team. We'll see you in Columbus. We'll let you go get another hat that says Big Ten regular season champs. Thanks for being with us, Coach. Thank you so much. Go Cats. Hey, Lou. <laughs> So Northwestern, the number one seed, headed to Columbus primetime on May 4th with a primetime cha championship game. Penn State will face Michigan. The winner of that one will face Northwestern. Ohio State takes on Maryland. Rutgers will take on Johns Hopkins. Congratulations, Northwestern, your Big Ten champs. Northwestern came in at 5-0. Aaron Koikendall with three goals and an assist. Radigan with four goals and assist. La Liberty with eight saves to push the mighty Northwestern Wildcats to a perfect finish, and that trophy is in their hands. I want to thank our amazing Big Ten crew. I also want to thank Taylor Thornton. I'm